All right. Good evening. Good evening, Coyotes and Lobos. Welcome to our Geoforce Texas uh, 2020 recruitment uh, presentation. With me is Mr. John Hash, a representative of the Geoforce program from the one and only University of Texas in Austin. So uh, during this presentation, he'll be giving some useful information for you and the parents as well. We're on YouTube tonight, we're on Facebook, and we're on Twitter. So at any part of our presentation, you make a comment. Uh, you're welcome to do that. And we will stop in the middle of our presentation to answer those questions. Again, uh, this broadcast is being recorded. So again, science teachers, please share that with your students uh, tomorrow and your announcements through Schoology and other uh, devices such as Remind. But with that, again, I'd like to turn, turn the time over to Mr. John Hash with the UT Geoforce Texas Recruitment. Okay, well, one, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for having me here today and joining us uh, for this presentation to learn about Geoforce program. Uh, some of you probably know about Geoforce, friends, family, uh, but today what we really want to dive into is about geology, about Geoforce, what we're looking forward to uh, in this upcoming summer. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's kind of hop right into what is Geoforce. Well, uh, honestly, if you take away anything from the presentation today, I just want everybody to know that Geoforce is a free outreach program through the University of Texas. All right, so we are not asking any of you to fundraise money for this program, selling anything. It is free, provided by the University of Texas. And the goal of the program is designed to increase the number of students pursuing STEM degrees in college, science, technology, engineering, math. And the goal of that overall is to help students move from those college uh, degrees onto rewarding careers. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about geology, get into what is geology. So first off, it's the study of the earth, everything that goes into the earth, whether that is the formation, the future, as we look into how our earth evolves or present day aspects. Uh, some issues that we talk about uh, that are studied by geoscientists are energy and climate change, water and mineral resources, or even natural hazards, such as volcanic eruptions or the effects of hurricanes on our coastline. It's interdisciplinary. When we talk about geoscience, it's really a lot of sciences combined. Chemistry and physics and biology all really make up the geosciences. Now, as a geoscientist, you are somebody who is strong in critical thinking. You have strong verbal and written skills and a passion to explore the world. Uh, honestly, when we talk about uh, the geoscientists who work in many different uh, facets, have to go out to the field to gather their resources and their research, and then they bring it back to the labs to analyze and study it. So there is opportunity to, to be traveling to certain locations to understand or better understand our world. And there are many areas of geoscience you can go into. It doesn't always mean just, uh, just industry, although that is one of the larger areas. But you can go into academia, you can go and work for a nonprofit, you can go and work for the government, or as I said, industry, or even research. This uh, pinwheel shows the different avenues that you can take when you have a background in geosciences. And when I say a background, what I mean is that you have a bachelor's degree, roughly a four-year degree, uh, but it still allows you as a stepping stone to go into some areas that you probably, uh, students still have an interest. You know, If you still want to be a lawyer, but you have the background in geosciences, you can go in and study environmental law. You can go and study land use, mineral rights. Uh, if you still want to impact uh, your local, state, or federal government, having a background in geosciences can actually be very important when we talk about uh, use of land and use of energy. Uh, when we talk about engineering of the sciences, but going into education, going into art, being a graphic uh, designer, illustrator, Many times when you go to a museum and you see the large fossilized replicas of dinosaurs and then uh, images next to it depicting what they would have looked like. Many of those people actually have geoscience, paleontology degrees, and then they study uh, art and design to help provide an accurate rendering of what they look like millions and millions of years ago. So there are different areas uh, that you can go into if you have a background in geoscience. And so that's the luxury of it, that there has that variety. Now our program, again, no cost to you, it's supported by many companies that you've probably seen uh, throughout your town. Gas stations, you see those are some of the energy industry who are 
in support for this program to help increase the number of students going into STEM, going into geoscience. Um, we've been in Uvalde since 2005. Uh, that was our first summer for the program. And in 2008, we were able to reach out to Houston. This last year, we've also branched into certain dis uh, certain districts in and around Central Texas, including San Antonio, uh, all the way up to Navasota with uh, programs to gear up. So our program is is constantly evolving and expanding. Uh, but our 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 true original um, status has always been with y'all in Southwest Texas. A little bit of history about Geoforce. This last year, actually, 82% of our students were minorities and 62% listed and identified as female. So we have quite a diverse group. And 14% this last year went on uh, to declare geoscience as their major. And I know 14%, that doesn't sound like very much. It, you know, it is rather small when we talk about our percentages of those that are female, minorities, 90%. 6% of our students go to college, 14% are studying geoscience. But the truth is that, that is 35 times the national average of students going into geosciences. So we're crushing the national averages in that. Our student population going into STEM, science, technology, engineering, math is over 50%. Again, we're, we're crushing the national averages with those. So that's the point of why I bring it up because it, they are actually uh, powerful statistics in that representation. Now, while uh, we do represent the University of Texas, students from our program, they're all over the country. We have over 73 different universities across the country that have Geoforce representation, anywhere from Harvard, Yale, and Stanford. Uh, we actually just had a student who told me at the beginning of the year he received acceptance to Cornell, so I'm very proud of him. The most of our students stay here in Texas. The majority at the University of Texas at Austin Texas A&M, University of Houston, UTSA are kind of close seconds in there, uh, as well as Baylor, Texas Tech. So uh, with that, staying in Texas does have some advantages. We are a lot closer. Uh, going to the University of Texas does have a little bit of advantage because that's where our offices are located. If you uh, do go there eventually, you can step into our college program coordinator's office and have a discussion about your classes or about research opportunities. Uh, so there are a little bit of advantages in that way. I want to highlight actually one of our students. Her name is Stephanie Suarez. And she joined Geoforce in 2009, graduated high school in 2012, went to the University of Texas and studied at the Jackson School. She then came and worked for us while she was in college during the summers as a counselor. I'll get a little bit into being a counselor uh, toward the end of this. But she worked for us during the summers, graduated, and then became uh, an ESIT, an education coach in training, while she's pursuing her PhD. Uh, she's at the University of Houston studying Martian rocks. And, and when I use that term Martian rocks, I, I really do mean that these are rocks from Mars, uh, where a meteor has impacted Mars and particles came off and they actually became meteors themselves and fell to Earth. Those are the particular rocks that she's studying. So uh, planetary geoscience is an actual thing, and that's probably uh, one of the aspects that she's uh, currently studying for her PhD. We're a pretty small program. Uh, the Geoforce staff, the GeoSTEM staff, uh, we're all under the director of Outreach University, Dr. Sam Moore, uh, with Dr. Leah Turner heading up all GeoSTEM programs K through 12. So anything that happens from kindergarten through 12th grade that is outreach with the Jackson School is under hers, and Geoforce falls under that. I mentioned earlier our college program coordinator. She has her office, UT's main campus, and she helps provide our students with information on internships when they're in college, information on research opportunities, whether that's research opportunities here at UT or in other universities or abroad, uh, as well as scholarship information. Now, there are some scholarships that are available to Geoforce students. They're not full rides, I'll say that, they, but they do uh, come in several increments, uh, two to $4,000. And they're only available for certain Geoforce students, uh, not just the population uh, in general. Now, myself and Jasmine and Kara, we make up the high school program. 
uh, coordinators. We handle all of the GeoForce aspects that deal with summer programming or even programs that take place during the school year. And those we've been working to increase uh, these next couple of years with GeoForce challenges. So I've kind of talked a lot about uh, what is geology, what is GeoForce, the history, but let's talk about this summer, summer 2021. What are we going to be doing? Who are we looking for? Well, we're looking for students in the eighth grade who maintain a B or better in their math and science. Now, uh, sometimes report cards are broken up six weeks. We look at the overall grade at the end of the semester or the end of the year. And we want students who exhibit exceptional social conduct. I'll be honest, this year it'll be a little different. We do have a hybrid program that's mostly virtual with planning for some in-person activities. But in the future, we will be fully in person, in the field, traveling out of state, going to different national parks, state parks, hotels, restaurants. So we want students who represent the university, represent GeoForce well. And then last, we want uh, commitments. Commitments from uh, y'all to participate each summer. The dates are already set for this summer. Get there in a couple slides. Uh, and we try to set those dates as far out in advance as we can. Uh, this upcoming summer, we'll start planning summer of 2022. And the goal of that is if you're accepted to the GeoForce program, uh, but your family wants to plan a, a vacation during the summer, we don't want them to conflict. We want you to have that capability of still being on a family vacation while also joining us during the summer. We don't want you to have to make that hard decision. So, uh, but that, that's, those aren't the only commitments. Commitments from us, the GeoForce program. We want to provide an outstanding experience for each of you. Uh, something that will be impactful and help prepare you for your future. Commitments from you during the time you're with us. So you're actually going to be participating in the coursework and the activities, uh, listening to lectures and engaging uh, through the virtual programming. Commitments from parents. Parents, we're going to ask you if, you're, if your child is accepted to GeoForce, that you will encourage them throughout high school to do well in their classes. Kind of stay on top of them and make sure that they are um, to the best of their abilities. And commitments from the schools. Without the support of the schools in and around Southwest Texas, we would not be able to be there and to provide this kind of information for y'all. So there's there's a lot that helps this wheel go round. So for this year, dates are already set, as I said, June 20th through the 26th. Now this, this program, uh, for all of y'all, the Southwest cohort, it's always going to be uh, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, and the surrounding counties of those areas, that's our Southwest cohort. We will have trained staff throughout the entire program. The majority of the program will be virtual, so we will have a lead coordinator as well as an expert geo geoscientist and a teacher from uh, with a science background who will be part of the educational team. And then during our in-person activities, uh, we will have some undergraduate students who serve as counselors. Uh, during all in-person activities uh, in the future, we will always have counselors uh, that serve uh, as a portion of our staff. And those counselors are college level students who have either one, been through the GeoForce program or two, currently studying in the geosciences or another STEM. Um, and students, that's what I wanted to bring up is if you are part of this program for the four years of high school, we don't just kind of drop you off when you go off to college. We have more things for you. We have opportunities, as I said, with internships and research opportunities that our college program coordinator provides. But then you also have the opportunity to come back during the summers and help build the future generations of GeoForce by being a counselor. So we have that opportunity to come back. So this year, what are we looking at? It's going to be a little different. We're looking at a hybrid program that's gonna be virtual and in person. First six days of the Academy, we'll be using um, platforms such as Zoom and Canvas. Those are University of Texas platforms that we use uh, for our lectures as our discussion board. Uh, and then on the final day, it'll be, we're planning for an in-person field experience. Now, Zoom and Canvas, uh, they are what we use at the university. So I know it might differ a little bit from what you have in your schools, uh, but Zoom, it's a very simple uh, virtual platform for any of our lectures or discussions. Canvas is a little different. It's an online platform that allows you to host discussions, 
discussion boards or assignments will be pinned there, uh, links to maybe a YouTube video if we're going to use it to have uh, for instruction later on. For this summer, we're not asking more than three hours a day for any of the virtual interaction. We just understand that that's too much to ask if we say more than three hours for y'all to be sitting in front of a screen and, and communicating for us, for our summer program. Now that will change in the future when we have our in-person days and our in-person field trips. What we plan to do this year is called GeoConnect Texas. So we're going to learn about our state and about the geology of Texas and how rivers flow to the coast. Uh, we're going to learn about coastal processes and bays, Gulf of Mexico in particular, estuaries. We'll then kind of go into deep gulf and learn about hydrocarbon seeps and coral reefs. We'll learn about underwater research vessels as well as sources of energy. Now, this hybrid experience will allow you to have uh, a little bit of extra from Geoforce since we won't be in person the entire week. We are going to be sending out packages to all the Geoforce students who are accepted and they'll have gear such as Geoforce shirt, uh, as well as guidebooks and other material that we'll use throughout the week. The in-person field day it will be voluntary. We're not forcing um, any of y'all to join us, but we will have buses that pick up in a central location and then we'll be dropped off in the evening. And I can be uh, really upfront with y'all. We always actually pick up and drop off for the Southwest cohort in Uvalde at Southwest Texas Junior College. So we're looked at this year, but I want everybody to realize that this year is a little bit of a hybrid year. It's like we said, a hybrid, uh, but it's a little different from what our normal program is like. And we're, we are looking for the summer of 2022 to be back to where it was previously which is traveling out of state for the 10th grade program to Southern Utah and Northern Arizona to visit places like Zion National Park, Grand Canyon National Park, other, take a Colorado uh, River raft ride and go down to Balanced Rock and under Navajo Bridge, learn about Glen Canyon Dam and energy sources through um, hydroelectric, uh, and then take a trip to Horseshoe Bend Overlook. So we do plan to be out in the field a full seven days um, early morning to late evenings, that that's our program. And then summer of 2023, well, it's even, even further. We're actually going up to the Pacific Northwest. We're going to Oregon, Southern Washington. We'll vi visit places like Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, uh, Crater Lake, Newberry Caldera. We'll head up the Oregon coastline. Throughout all of this, we're actually staying at a couple of different universities every time we visit in, in Arizona. We're at Northern Arizona University, and in Southern Utah, we're at Dixie State. We're up in Oregon. We do stay at the University of Oregon, and we stay at Portland State University as well. So we do have an uh, introduction to other colleges while we're here. But for you to become a part of the GeoForce program, the application is open. Uh, open January 1st. We had pushed back everything because it is a new application. Students and parents, if you've had family and friends who have done the application before, it is different this time. Uh, it's a different platform that we're using. It's a Qualtrics application. So it's very simple, very fast, but it is not a open work on it, save and come back to later. It's a one time open and use in this case. So what we're asking is that everybody to have all their information up front, ready to go. And then that way, when they click on that to start that application, it'll be very quick. Basic items, general information about yourself. That, I'm sure everybody, all of y'all will get that, no problem. You know, name, email, parent email, a few questions about race, ethnicity, gender, those kinds of things. Your complete report card from seventh grade and your first semester eighth grade. That takes just a little bit of gathering of information. And this is all done electronically. So if you have your actual report card, it'd be best to take a picture with your phone that way you can upload it to a computer. Uh, or if you have it all online, you can take a screenshot, JPEG of it. Uh, but just make sure it has your name along with the classes and the grades, that it's all in one picture. So sorry to interrupt, John. So real quick on that, students, our eighth graders, please get with Ms. Custis, your eighth grade counselor. So she'll be able to get that report card that we just talked about with your name and grades, and she'll get it to you in a, in a PDF or JPEG. So again, uh, it sounds like preferably a JPEG, correct? John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. JPEG. 
Yep. So, so get with your get with Miss Casas, our eighth grade counselor. She'll send you that that uh, report card and a JPEG, and then you can upload it. We've also have planned next week some time for all our eighth grade students. Or need assistance, you can get with myself, Miss the hour, one of the counselors, and we'll work through through this application. Because again, we we believe in this, and it's it's something that we're willing to support students who are face to face or virtual. We'll get you a tutoring link to get get all that applied. But again, uh, just reach out to your counselor specifically for that report card because that's something that we have access to. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I accidentally hit the exit out when I went to look for his stories. I apologize. Um, but I do want to talk about uh, there is an essay. And that essay is a little bit of a two-part essay. It is what interests you about earth science and the GeoForce program. Three to 500 words. And uh, the reason why I actually also wanted to hit that escape is because I actually wanted to show y'all what the application looks like briefly so you can get a good picture of what you're doing. So let me make sure I'm screen sharing properly here. I'm going to stop screen share. And I have this. So we uh, are seeing the GeoForce. Uh, website, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So when we hit that link for the applicants, it brings you here. New applicants for GeoForce Texas has basic information about it. Uh, we're not, again, for a grade math and science. And uh, it's a three to 500 word essay. Students, parents, again, if you uh, lose those dates, you can find them here. But once you hit that application, it will take you directly where you need to go. And it was very, it, it's uh, basic. That's why we wanted to simplify it because we know we don't have a lot, a lot of time to say. Uh, but your uh, name, email, parent guardian email. We have gender, race, ethnicity, the school you attend, your cohort, y'all, everybody here, you're going to be Southwest. Then you can upload your PDF or JPEG of your seventh grade report card, eighth grade report card. Fill in your grades. Now, if you had any issue with a grade that, you know, maybe it was just a little low, but there was something outside of it, you can let us know those kinds of things. Here's an opportunity in this particular section. And then take some time and talk to us about some clubs, organizations, uh, National Junior Honor Society, or um, if you're part of any any teams, whether they're or sports, whether they're individual sports or, or team sports, uh, you can go ahead and list those here. So There's so an opportunity. Can I add with that, John? So any of our kids, if you guys have done UIL academics this year, put yes. that if you're, if you're in band, if you're in choir, yeah. if you do 4-H, I know a lot of our kids just did stock. So that's that's definitely something we want you to highlight. So again, anything that you do outside of school that's a UIL participation uh, event, that's that's the stuff we're looking for again. So again, like Boy Scouts, uh, yes. FFA, Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts, those kinds of things. F F F A. Um, if you do something in your church choir where you or church services where you do something like a like a youth group counselor, all those things are, are things that that UT GeoForce is looking for. And ultimately, when you apply to college, that's that's what they're going to ask yeah. you. So so this yeah. is a, a great question to ask now. Looking forward to the future as a college applicant. Yeah, and then lastly, here's here's the spot to uh, put in your essay. Uh, we recommend writing it in a in Word document somewhere. Uh, that way you can edit and, and make corrections and then copying and pasting it into here. It's the easiest way to go about it. And then it's submit. It's very fast. It's very streamlined this year. But I know we don't have a whole lot of time because the deadline is Monday, February 15th. So that's coming up in just about two weeks for y'all. So, so we have a question, John. So uh, uh, when you say report card from last year as well, does that include the grades from the progress report or just the report card? So uh, I believe so, that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the report card, we're, we're looking at something that shows the end of year. And when we talk about last year, so seventh grade, we're, we're looking at what shows the end of the year. So uh, sometimes progress reports do a lot of the six weeks grades. We're not looking at that. It's what has the final grade for your year. Awesome. Thank you for that. Oh, man, I got really dark in here. I apologize to I apologize to y'all. I got our sun was setting a lot quicker than I expected. OK, 
Okay, so we have another question while you're pulling that uh, screen up, John. So it's actually one of our science teachers. Will the students need a recommendation letter from a teacher? No, we do not have a recommendation this year. That was one uh, portion of the previous applications. However, this year, teachers uh, and counselors as well, we are not having uh, recommendation letters this year. Uh, and, and probably even going forward, that will not be an aspect of the application. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, I didn't see any more come through, but. No, sir. I, I think you're good to go back to the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Okay. And while you're doing that, just a reminder to all our people, if you're on YouTube, we've, we've added that link for uh, what Mr. John said with the application. It's there and the comments on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So again, um, take an opportunity to save that link on your iPad students and, and that'll be just a good bookmark for you to get to that application link again, but it's in the comments on all our, on all our platforms. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, the, uh, deadline is, is coming up Monday, February 15th and, um, plenty of time though. If you do have questions, parents, students, or if there are issues during your application process, myself or Jasmine, Gulick, who is the other coordinator, uh, we are here ready to answer any questions. So we are not in our offices right now. The university has us working remotely. Uh, so the best way to get in touch with us is through email. Uh, we have our email here as well as you can also uh, just email the GeoForce account as well. And we get back to y'all as, as quick as possible with any questions. Again, and those questions could be about the GeoForce program in general or future or currently what's happening this year, if you have more questions. Awesome. So we have another question, John, came in. It's from uh, Anne-Marie Garcia. Let's say we do make it into GeoForce this year. Are we going to be a part of it throughout high school, or do they have to apply every year? Is that application process something I do as a freshman, a sophomore, a junior? Uh, yes. So actually, you, this is your opportunity to apply. Each year, actually, you just go through a registration. Once you've been admitted to the program, you're part of the program. And you're even part of the program even if you no longer live in Uvalde, actually. Uh, if your, your family's work takes them elsewhere, as long as you can make it to Uvalde to start each program, each summer uh, academy, then we accept that as part of uh, you being a part of GeoForce. Uh, you do not have to reapply. It's just re-registering with us. Uh, and that's just updating contact information for university standards. Awesome. Thank you for that. I, I think that's the last one we had right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know what? Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. The questions are great. And um, I just hope to see, you know, some, some of y'all applying this year. We really look forward to it and uh, hope that, uh, again, as I mentioned, we're planning for 20 summer of 2022 that we're back in the field. Uh, but please don't think that this year we're, we're trying to skate by. We are really building up the virtual programming so that it's very interactive, that you are learning about geoscience here in the state of Texas. That's a real big thing is, is we have a big state and there's a lot to learn. So I hope you all can be excited about learning more about this state and the geoscience that's behind it. So sorry, one real quick, John. I know we're, we're now we're running out of time, but we got another question. If we don't make it in GeoForce this year, can we apply next year? Yes, I think that was from Alina. I, yes, sir. I saw. Yeah, so to address that, Alina and to anybody else who has that question, um, I'll I'll actually preface it with a, a few things. I accept forty two students per cohort, so that means that I'm accepting forty two students from the southwest area, uh, and when. After this year, again, we, we don't ask students to reapply. We just want them registering so that they have a continuous program. It doesn't allow many opportunities for students to, to, to come in after their eighth grade year. But that doesn't mean it, it doesn't happen because every once in a while we have students that figure that the program's not for them or they drop out because uh, whatever reason they feel like. 
And that does allow us to pull from applicants that come from students who are in ninth grade or 10th grade. And, and it does happen. We do pull students in uh, from those years, but the, the opportunity is a little small. I just want to be honest with y'all that it's, it's, uh, it's a little small. Um, I, I wish it was bigger, but we're going to have to wait a couple more years before we can start adding more cohorts, more uh, programs. We'll have to see what we can do fundraising wise to get more for y'all. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for that answer. And thank you, uh, students and teachers for those questions. So again, uh, I want to thank you, John, from the University of Texas Geoforce program. Uh, I've had friends who've gone through the program personally, and they've done great. They've all enjoyed it. So students, again, get with Ms. Costas, your eighth grade counselor. Get with myself or Ms. Leal, the assistant principal, and we'll work with you guys. We want we want to make you successful and, and know where we're at. So sorry, one last question, and then we're, <laughs> we'll, we'll sign off tonight. I got one more. It says, do you know the acceptance rate, the percent, I guess? Ah, that's that's a very interesting question. Acceptance rate really depends upon how many applications come into Geoforce just from the Southwest cohort. Remember, um, y'all are not competing against students in Houston or those other regions I talked about. The counties that surround Uvalde, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and the small towns that are kind of in between there, that's the region that's Southwest cohort. I also, we, we don't hold a certain amount of seats per school. Uh, students apply on their own merit and, and uh, you know, I'm not holding three seats for Eagle Pass, three seats for Uvalde, two seats for Del Rio. We, we just don't do that. It's based upon each uh, student's individual application and uh, acceptance rate. Um, I think last year I uh, can roughly say we had about 200 students apply from the Southwest region. So uh, from there I'm taking 42%. So it's you know, about 20 ish, uh, you know, if you a Phoenix acceptance rate. Again, this year is, is a little different. Uh, we might have more, or we might have less applications. I can never really be 100% uh, you know, it's prior to tell you what our acceptance rate is going to be. It's really only like I can tell you after the fact. So, yep. um, so the best thing students again is, is write a solid essay and get everything there. So again, we're, we're going to help you work through that. But again, it, it's, yeah. they're, they're asking. Could I, for, could I add one ahead. more thing? I'm sorry. If I, if you don't mind, just ahead, one more thing for, for students, students out there and parents, you know, uh, I want y'all to realize the students, your seventh grade report card is not changing your eighth grade report card first semester. You know, I hope you did a great job. The biggest impact that you have right now in this application is that essay. And, and there's a, a couple of weeks here for you to take some time to sit down and, and write that essay. And to be honest, I have seen throughout the years students who've had wonderful grades, but they don't take any time on that essay and, and they they kind of blow their opportunity for this program. And then on the on the flip side, I've seen students who whose grades were not always at the very top, but they had motivation and determination that you could tell through that essay that they were truly interested in, in science, in earth science, and they just wanted to learn more. And they were really able to express that through that essay and that helped bump them, bump them up into that top 42. So, so please take some time right now uh, to write that essay and, and ask for help if you need it. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people around that are willing to help out because, oh, if you are accepted to the program, uh, early March, early March is when we are uh, sending out those acceptances so that everybody knows so you can plan. Uh, because again, we want you to be part of this program and, and uh, we want to make sure you have time for that. So early March is when we plan to send out those uh, if you are accepted or, or not. All right. Well, again, I, I uh, fingers crossed. I think that's all the questions we have again, John, but again, appreciate you. Thank you students. Again, teachers, a science department, please share this link with your students uh, via Schoology. And uh, we hope you have a good evening. If you need any help, again, reach out to us. And uh, like always here at U Valley, we always tell our students to rep the U.